The city of San Diego and GE have launched a program to turn streetlights into intelligent connected devices. The intelligent lighting platform can sense sound, light, and environmental conditions. With this in place, the city will be able to collect real-time sensor data. On this segment, we will take a closer look at the technology that makes it all work. I'm so pleased to have Austin Ash, General Manager of Intelligent Cities from GE, on the program with me today. Austin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Peggy. So, Austin, let's talk a little bit about GE and the smart cities technology that you're doing to help the city of San Diego. Yeah, would love to. We are partnered with the city of San Diego in deploying what's going to be the world's largest IoT sensor for cities platform in the world. The technology allows for a city to repurpose their street lighting infrastructure into digital infrastructure with a means of sensor capabilities that are unlike anything seen before. Sensors that can see things, hear things, they can bring about and extract a lot of information and data from its environment and make that data available for building applications that actually solve some of the city's biggest challenges uh, to date, all through applications. Now we talk about sensors being so important in city deployments. Let's talk about what makes this one so different when you talk about it in the world. Yeah, so what we have done is actually taken this digital infrastructure and made it almost like a smartphone. In other words, think about a smartphone and what it is. It's got 15 to 16 different sensors inside of this device. Well, our platform called City IQ has upwards of 30 sensors in it. And it can actually have even more sensing capabilities on top of that, all through virtualized software applications deployed. So things like traffic, pedestrian counting, parking detection, environmental uh, protection, public safety, the list goes on and on and on about the sensor capabilities that are inside. And then the use cases that come out of that are extraordinary when you start thinking about all the different applications that can be built off of all of these data sets either individually or combined as a sensor fusion. So you're really saying the key here is between the sensor and the apps that come together. That's right. So there's one more element too. There's the sensor, the apps that are working together, but then also think about it in the context of street lighting. There are about 65,000 street lights in the city of San Diego. And so when you think about a street light being every 200 feet away, that creates ubiquitous data flow. So sensors, apps, but at a, at a whole new level of density and ubiquity that allows us to get very, very important real-time data. So now you're talking about bringing real-time data sensor technology and the ability to bring information to move traffic, flow, pedestrian, all of these kind of elements together. So you're bringing all this technology together quickly in a way that's never been done before. Absolutely. Quickly, scalably, and with a whole new business model and a whole new sense that allows the city to do this cost effectively. So what are the short-term and long-term results you hope to achieve from this out of all this real-time data? Because you're collecting a lot of information then, I would assume, from all of this. Yeah, you know, I think that short-term, um, there's a couple of really neat benefits. I think that ultimately, the city is going to get extraordinary cost savings from just having this infrastructure in place now. If you think about going back to the smartphone example for a second, I don't have to buy a flashlight or an individual cell phone and a GPS device and a PDA device anymore, right? I've got all that consolidated into one device. The city now has parking sensors, environmental sensors, public safety sensors all consolidated into one device that can be used extens extensionally. What we hope to see on day one, day two of the deployment of the platform are new citizen services, things like parking guidance, right? Imagine not having to drive around the block four or five times looking for an on-street parking uh, space, right? You can just pull up an app with your phone and get an app that shows you where all the real-time parking spaces are. Traffic optimization. Imagine not having to sit at a red light 
when there's no other cars coming by the other direction. The light just knows you're there and it turns green and lets you go through. Environmental quality, imagine knowing what the temperature, humidity, pressure, air quality is in your region that you live and work and play in the city every day. Um, public safety, so enabling um, you know things as little as pedestrian and, and bicycle mobility to things as complex and important as gunshot detection. All of these things will be available in the short term. Long term, because this is an open platform, the city is actually going to be able to build new applications on top of it, either, either themselves or using professional third-party developers or even the local universities and high school students and entrepreneurs and incubators. They're going to be invited to come and build some of the city's future applications as well that are apps that we haven't even thought of yet. So Austin, you just described you have to bring a lot of different partners together to do this, to build this, to make this happen. So how long does it take to build this type of infrastructure to make it happen so that the city of San Diego makes this all work? Because it sounds like there's a lot of partners involved in all of this. Sure, sure. Um, believe it or not, it doesn't take that much time because it's all done over the air and with software. And so if I can cheat and go back to the smartphone example, think about how quickly the app store built out with your smartphone device. How many applications are on that app store now? We're seeing the exact same trend happening in the smart cities world. So we have 50 plus applications with, with different partners already built on the platform, using the data sets, solving different problems. And we're very, very early into this um, into this journey with the city of San Diego. So by the end of the year, we expect to have, you know, close to five or 10 apps running on the platform with another 10 to 20 being looked at um, as the next evaluation um, of deployments. And so really it's as fast as the city wants to go because the data is open, it's out there, it's on their open data portal using our APIs. So the city, though, ultimately has to look at what it ex has existing wise and then what it has to build going on further to be able to do this. Because you're contributing to the software side, but there's so many other things it has to build to make this city go, to make it an intelligent city going on. So those are things that you hope to contribute as it builds into its future, correct? Correct, correct. So we will continue to uh, recruit application partners. We'll continue to host educational events in the local communities to show um, how your average citizen can get involved in being part of building the smart city apps of the future. We'll continue to work with city officials um, to make sure that they've got the most modern tools at their fingertips to use this data. And so we will be hand in hand with the city building this out so that it's not just the city officials that get the benefit and not just the citizens that get the benefit, but that anyone who wants to look at San Diego as the cornerstone can leverage everything built and replicate that across the country or across the world. Well, we have to thank you so much. Austin Ash, you are the General Manager for Intelligent Cities. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Peggy. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, that's our innovation in tech for today.